welcome back to my channel. It is Sunday and we are going to close out the weekend with a big pot of chili. And also we are going to have leftovers for tomorrow night's football game. We are huge Chiefs fans and they were supposed to play on Thursday, but due to COVID they got moved to Monday. So I'm gonna make the big pot of chili today and then tomorrow we can just cozy up under a blanket, watch some football and eat a big pot of chili with some like saltines and cheese and all that. We've got all the toppings. So I'm really excited to just get this made. I've got my crock pot out, all of our ingredients. This is one of our favorite recipes in our household to make. I really wanted to also share an apple crisp recipe. If I'm able to tonight, then I'll whip that up. But if not, then I will come back on here tomorrow night and share my recipe for that with you guys as well. Another one of our favorite things in the fall, so I'll be sharing that. And this video is going to kick off a new playlist called Comfort Food. So I'm going to be sharing some of our favorite cozy homemade recipes at home to have during the colder months of the year. Make sure you hit the subscribe button before you leave today if that's something that you are interested in. I would love to have you in my YouTube family. Click the bell notification so that you're notified whenever I post a video as well. All right, let's make some chili. The pot of chili I'm making today has no beans in it and that's how we like it personally around here. I'm not a bean girl. If you are, you can add whatever type of beans that you like. And also this is a little bit more spicy. We use the Jimmy Dean spicy sausage. If you want it less spicy, I would just substitute the Jimmy Dean regular or just regular pork sausage. It takes two pounds with a lot of it. If you like a medium spice, then you could do one regular and then one hot. But we do two pounds of hot <laughs> Jimmy Dean because we like our spicy food. So for this recipe, you will need two pounds of sausage, two yellow onions, two green peppers, one can of diced tomatoes undrained. We're using actually like homemade canned tomatoes from my aunt's garden, but you can use a 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes and you do not drain it. And then two of these big cans of the tomato sauce and then one 14.5 ounce can of tomato sauce. The big ones are I think 29 ounces. We will be using an entire package of celery. And then the spices are paprika, cumin, chili powder, red pepper, and oregano. And I've got a backup chili powder because ours is almost gone. So if you're doing this as an all day crock pot meal, then it's a little bit different. And I'll include that in the description box, but tonight we're actually whipping up pretty quick. So what I like to do to speed this up is I get the crock pot going on high heat and then I get a large skillet heating up and I will be browning the sausage in the skillet, simultaneously heating up all of the tomato sauce and the spices. So we've got all the tomato sauce and diced tomatoes in here. We'll just let that heat up for a second before I add the spices, but we're gonna switch over to the sausage. I'm using this tool. I got this off Amazon. This is the Pampered Chef. I don't remember what it's called, but this is the handiest tool when it comes to ground meat. Makes it super easy to separate this out. It's dishwasher safe, which is good because you're dealing with raw meat. But I'll link it if I can find it. Okay, you guys can see in my recipe card, I really don't have measurements for the spices. Kind of stinks, I know, for a recipe, but I'll just show you how I do it. Just basically like go around like two or three times of each spice. And then later on, I will taste test this and I'll add more of what I think it needs. And if you like it a little bit spicier, then I would recommend adding a little bit more chili powder and a little bit more of this red pepper. Obviously we're making chili. Don't be stingy with the chili powder. And then just stir it in here so we kind of have like a spicy tomato paste going on. I'm gonna get started over here on the onions and the green peppers. We're gonna use this chopper, chop up the onions and the green peppers, and then also this whole thing of celery. Our blades must be getting a little bit dull. We've used the heck out of this thing. This caught all of the chopped green peppers. I'm gonna put them in here and then we're gonna do the same with the onion. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a spoon like this that has a drain in it to get this sausage into here. It is all cooked, but we're gonna leave the sausage grease in the skillet so that we can saute the vegetables. And 
tonight, since we need to eat this pretty quickly, I would soften them like all the way. So we'll give them quite a while in the pan just to get softened up. Just gonna stir that in there. Yum. Cover it up, and I've got this baby on high right now just because, again, we're in a hurry tonight, but you could leave this on low like six hours all day, cook the veggies halfway, and then add them into the crock pot and just let all the flavors mix. Got the celery all kind of chopped in half and took off the ends. Celery is one of my favorite things to put in chili. If you've not tried celery in your chili, I highly recommend it. And I definitely would love to know what are some of your favorite ingredients that you put in your chili at home that you think everybody should try out because I think that it's so cool how many different types of chili there are. I ended up cutting some of the celery up in this thing just to have a variety and save some time. But the celery is all chopped, so we're going to move the onions into the pot and then move the celery into the remaining grease. Saute it and get it cooked and ready to add to the chili. added a little bit of olive oil to the celery to just kind of saute this up. Most of the sausage grease was absorbed with the onions and the pepper, so just need a little bit of moisture here. If you are able to cover this, that would be ideal. It will happen way, way faster, but we don't have a cover for this size of pan, so we've just gotta kinda wait it out. This smells so good. This is kind of a chunky recipe. If you like it a little less chunky, I would add more tomato sauce and chop your vegetables a little bit smaller, but we like it really chunky. And then for toppings, we like to use shredded cheese, sharp cheddar, mild cheddar, something like that, any type of cheddar basically. And then saltine crackers are our favorite crackers to put on top. And then for tomorrow, I actually have some jalapenos coming like I mentioned. So we'll also put those on tomorrow. But for tonight, we're just gonna use saltines and shredded cheese. guys, it is the next day. I didn't have time to make the apple crisp yesterday, but that's okay because we're gonna make it tonight. Tonight the Chiefs game's on. It was supposed to be last Thursday, but it got moved to Monday. And then it started at four today. But we recorded it. We're gonna pretend like it started at seven just because neither one of us can get off work before that. As soon as he gets home, we'll be heating up the chili, but right now I'm gonna get started on this apple crisp. So I just peeled them and then we're slicing them into super, super thin slices. And we're mixing two small red apples and two Granny Smiths. It just kind of gives a more like variety of flavors. Then we're gonna put the filling together in this bowl and then the crumb topping will go on top. And as soon as we pop that in the oven, we'll make up the caramel sauce. It's 
just what I do when I'm out. So try not to hold me down. Feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at these beautiful stars. I want to drive a faster car. Nothing can break me. Nothing can break me. All right, this is our filling. It looks so good and smells delicious. So we're going to put the apples in it and then coat the apples. So just make sure you're getting them nicely coated. Just, they're very lightly coated. They don't need to be like clumpy. So don't start adding more, but coating them nicely and evenly. So these are in the pan. I recommend using an eight by eight glass pan or metal pan. An eight by eight is the best size for this. And then we're going to put this crumb topping on top. Just evenly spread it out. All right, that is it. It's nicely spread out. These clumps are butter, but they will melt when we put them in, obviously. So I put this in the oven at 375 degrees for 35 minutes or until brown. I usually leave it in a couple extra minutes, but it just kind of depends. So you have to watch it starting at about 35. And you want to bring this to a boil, but really by medium heat. So you have to kind of be really patient for this. If you've ever made homemade caramel sauce, you probably know that. Stirring constantly. As soon as you bring this to a boil, you're going to boil it for five minutes, stirring like literally constantly. Standing here and stirring for five minutes. It's going to be worth it. And then you'll add the evaporated milk and vanilla and take it off the heat. All right, so this is what it looks like when it's boiling. We had it on level six, but we are going to put it down to level five because it's hot enough. I can smell a little burning, but not too much. It still smells more like vanilla. So you stir this constantly for five minutes. All right, we're down to the wire. So it's been about five minutes. I do want to note that this is a little bit darker because I ran out of brown sugar and I used dark brown sugar, which is totally fine. It's just a little bit darker in color. So I just want to let you know that in case you try to make this and it looks a little bit different, but it has been full five minutes boiling. So we're going to remove it from the heat. Now turn off the burner, safety first. Then we're going to add the evaporated milk and vanilla mixture and then stir it in. We're gonna let this cool off while our apple crisp is finished. There's about eight minutes left on that. All right, I just pulled this out. This went in for an extra five minutes, so it ended up being about 40 minutes total. So it's bubbling through the sides. It's browned around the edges. That's how it should look. And then the caramel sauce is thickened up a little bit, but we are going to go ahead and finish eating our chili and then we're gonna come back and this should be at a temperature that's better to eat. So, and we'll put it all together and show you guys how it looks. We've got it all plated up and I'm using this Belfonte Homestyle Vanilla Ice Cream. I like Homestyle Vanilla with this instead of Vanilla Bean. It mixes with the flavors and the caramel better. We've got the ice cream on top and now we're going to just drizzle this caramel sauce. And this recipe makes about six servings of this size or four really large servings. I think it's a little too rich for anything bigger than this. So this is as big as we're gonna go and we're gonna enjoy. Recipes for the chili, apple crisp, and this caramel sauce here are in the description box below for you guys. Mm. That was like the perfect night. Chili, apple crisp, our team won, and we just had a great night at home. It like hit the spot. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more videos like this on my channel, just combination like cozy nights at home. As I mentioned, this is the first video on my new comfort food playlist that I'll be adding to from now through March, probably all the colder months of the year. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out if that's something that you wanna see. I'll put my fall playlist here for you guys to watch next and I will see you in my next video. Bye.